The aftermath of Hurricane Helene was a stark reminder of what it means to be isolated, even in a moderately populated area. Phone lines were down, power lines were down, there was no cell service, no internet. We were effectively cut off. Even after I had experienced a fairly substantial earthquake years ago in Southern California, mobile cell service was still available. But in the northern part of South Carolina, there was no cell service for several days, and power lines were down, and landline communication was also down for a week. I vowed to not let this happen again. In this episode, I show you what I came up with for an emergency communication system, which can also be used for communication when we're in a rural or isolated area. Even if you're not in RV, or you may want to consider having this set up for emergencies where you live. Here we go. Hi, I'm Chuck Minear and welcome to Are We There Yet? As I shared in the intro, after Hurricane Helene, I decided I didn't want to be completely isolated communication-wise ever again. So I started to look into options for emergency communications. I've looked at things before but found them so expensive, I just couldn't swing it. Now, the most obvious communication device is a satellite phone. They've been around for a while. And in a pinch, they seem like a great solution. Prices have come down since I first looked, but phones still cost just under $1,000 and up, and the monthly plans run around $100 a month and up. Garmin makes a pretty handy communication device. I actually own one, but I've never used it. It's called a Garmin InReach, and for three to $500, depending on the model, this little device will let you text via satellite, and it also has an emergency SOS button right here on the side. But there is a monthly data cost, and for something that sits around and does nothing most of the time, if not all of the time, at least hopefully all the time, it just seemed like it wasn't worth it. Probably the ultimate solution is eventually going to be satellite communication through your cell phone. T-Mobile's already offering a texting plan on iPhones, and that might be the most logical solution for most people. But at this point, it's texting only, and getting your iPhone to connect to a satellite is still a little finicky. And I wanted a solution that I could use every day if I needed it for emergencies or non-emergencies. And the obvious choices are satellite, again, and the obvious satellite is Starlink. And with the advent of the Starlink Mini, I think we might have the best solution possible at this point. Let me show you what I've come up with. What I'm about to show you is my kit. It's the one that I put together and you can use this kit for everyday use, but it also shines in an emergency. Now the links to all of the items that I'm about to show you are in the show notes, so you can put together your own kit if you'd like to. Space in an RV is at a premium. And the Starlink Mini is great. Comes in this small box even, this is the whole thing. The Starlink Mini is great because it's an all-in-one unit that is about the size, as you can see, of a sheet of paper. So getting it to fit in a limited space RV is fairly easy. The router is built in, and all you need to do is run a cord for power and then point it in the right direction. Now the original Starlink is larger, quite a bit, but it also works great. But to use it with low voltage, like you would need in an emergency or for an RV, you need a special adapter. And the router's separate from the dish, which means that it needs to be protected from the weather. And you also need special cabling to connect the two. Although because it's larger, the original Starlink can achieve higher data rates. But for most people's use, I think the data rate of the Mini is sufficient, especially if you're using it for emergency communications. Now, the back of the Starlink Mini has this slot to hold attachments. This is a kickstand, and the kickstand just kicks up and lets you point the Starlink Mini in multiple directions and change the angle slightly so you can you know, get a good signal. 
but it also comes with this pole adapter. Some people install a flagpole on their new RV ladder or bumper and use this adapter which snaps right in and allows you to mount the Starlink up high. So what you do is you lift this up and pull. This comes off and your adapters snap right in. But if I'm boondocking or camping with no hookups, I'm like out in the middle of nowhere and I want to be able to move the dish to different areas, maybe away from the RV so I can see clear skies. I also don't necessarily want it to be on the ground for people to step on or trip over or for animals to get to it. I don't know how robust it is when a dog pees on it, frankly. This adapter attaches to your pole so that you can attach this part to a camera tripod. This fits in here, you tighten this down. Now this is optional, but if your RV has an exterior 12 volt plug, you can get an adapter, whatever kind that plug is. This is the one that fits my particular one. And you can get an adapter to go from that plug to the barrel plug that plugs into the Starlink Mini and then you have access to the bank of onboard lithium batteries if your camper is so equipped. So if you take your Starlink Mini out of the box, you'll see that it also comes with a cord, a long cord, and this is a barrel adapter that fits in the bottom. And it's a standard size barrel, but these rubber rings that are on here um, make a watertight connection. This uh, cord that comes with it is about 15 meters or almost 50 feet. So you can get the Starlink, you know, a bit of ways from your rig if you need to. The cable goes with this power supply and this plugs into a standard outlet. The problem is in an emergency, you may not have access to AC power. So my kit has a couple extra things that I wanna take a minute and show you. This cable that I'm showing you has a barrel connection like I showed you with the with the rubber washers. You can see the rubber washers. It also has a USB-C plug on the other end. Yes, one of the reasons to get a Starlink Mini is because it runs off of USB-C. But a few things you'll want to remember. Make sure that the cable you purchase can handle at least 60 and preferably 100 watts. It's very important. This cable has a chip inside and that helps regulate power to this device. The Starlink Mini is capable of running off USB-C power as long as the USB-C port is capable of supplying at least 60 watts. And the supply is intelligent or adaptive. This is often labeled on the power supply as PD for power delivery, which means it can supply a higher voltage than the normal five volts for USB if the device allows it. And it's smart, so it knows that. I purchased this 140 watt power bank. It's small enough to fit in the case that I'm about to show you, but large enough to give me about three hours or more of internet usage. It can also charge other devices. It's got a USB-A and another USB-C plug at the top. 60 watts is the minimum you need, but the more, the better. I've heard of people having trouble with less than 100 watts. You can also get this USB-C to barrel connector, but I've had more luck with the dedicated cables, so. Another possibility for power is a power tool battery adapter. If you carry rechargeable tools from Ryobi or Milwaukee, DeWalt, Rigid, you can purchase these adapters that let you use those batteries to run the Starlink. Now I've not tried them out, so I don't know exactly how long the batteries last, but I'll put links in the description so you can get more information. Now to keep everything safe and dry for travel, I purchased this case. And this case is from a company called Unmake. And I particularly like this one because inside where the foam is, the foam cutouts were already cut. And they left room under for the dish for cables and for the battery. 
Now you can even put your essentials in a regular backpack if you wanted to, but I decided that this would work better for my RV. So here's how I'm going to put all of this together. Unmake made this pretty simple for me. I'm gonna take my large cable and put it down here in the bottom. And then I'm gonna take my other cables and put that in the middle also. And my battery pack fits down in here. In fact, I think I like to put my battery pack in first and then put this other cable with it. Here's my other cable for my DC that I have. My other barrel adapter, put that down into um, this slot. I've got my adapter for my pole. That fits right into here, like so. Let me just pull this away a little bit. Then I have my place for my power supply. And I also have my dish. It's right in here. Then you just close it, snap it, and you're ready to go. It even has this little valve here, which allows you to um, kind of burp out extra air that's inside so that you don't get any moisture you know, lingering inside. Now I've got a watertight box with a handle and a place to put padlocks if I need to on this box. It's lightweight, it's portable, I can take it anywhere, and if I don't have AC power available, I can still communicate with the outside world. Let me give you one other bit of advice. I bought the Starlink kit from Home Depot around Christmas time when it was on sale, and there's a reason for that. If you buy your Starlink Mini directly from Starlink, they will automatically activate it after 30 days if you haven't done it sooner. I purchased this from Home Depot during Christmas when there was a bit of a sale, as I said, but I didn't want to activate it right away. I wasn't going to be traveling again for several months. I wanted to be able to buy it at a lower price when I was sure I could buy it because they weren't always in stock. As long as you buy it from an authorized Starlink distributor, which Home Depot is, and there are other distributors too, Best Buy, other sellers, you're not locked in. Although. If you plan on using it right away, then that doesn't really matter. Now, Starlink keeps changing their pricing plans, but as of the making of this video, let me tell you what's available and what I would suggest. The best deal is Starlink Home Unlimited. It has prioritized speeds, but the trick is you need to be in a fixed location. RVers have in the past just moved to a location, changed their address whenever they moved, whether it was a week or two weeks or whatever. But as Starlink becomes more popular, there are areas of the country that are not allowing new home signups at all because they're impacted and areas that are charging a hundred dollar surcharge to sign up. So there's a good possibility that at one point you'll be stuck without service depending on where in the country you move. Starlink also has an unlimited roaming plan, and you can take the Starlink Mini anywhere you want within the United States and within Alaska, which is of course part of the United States for those of you who don't know. You can even spend up to one month outside of your country of origin. So for example, if you're a US citizen, you can go into Canada or Mexico or really anywhere in the Western Hemisphere that Starlink is available for one month and not have to reconnect from the US. After a month, they can cut you off and make you sign up in a different country. And I've heard people having all kinds of problems with that. That plan is $165 a month, unlimited in the United States. But the speed does slow down when the network is congested. You can also pause this plan or any of the plans and restart them when you start traveling again. They also have a 50 gigabyte roaming plan for $50 a month. It's currently the one I'm using. If you go over, each additional gigabyte is $1. Their newest plan is $10 a month for 10 gigabytes with a $2 a gigabyte overage fee. This plan is not available when you first sign up, but if you sign up and pause your plan, the $10 plan becomes available when you start up again. So which plan is right for you? Well, if you live in a fixed location and it's available, get the Home Unlimited plan. If you travel a lot and you use a lot of internet, get the unlimited roaming. 
If your use of internet is moderate or you're just running security cameras or a ring doorbell, the 50 gigabyte plan might work for you. And if you're using the kit for emergencies only, the 10 gigabyte plan is a great value and it's peace of mind. I would suggest you track your internet usage for a month and you can do that on your current ISP or internet service provider. They usually have a way to log into your account and see what you use. If you use between 10 and 30 gigabytes a month, then the 10 gigabyte plan will be your best deal. If you use between 30 and 115 gigabytes a month, then the 50 gigabyte plan is for you. And if you use over 115 gigabytes, you'll want to stick with the unlimited plan. Since we now have our kit put together, in our next episode, I'll show you how to set up your Starlink and answer some of your questions. Questions like maybe, how do I log in? Do I need a phone? How do I use the battery? Uh, how do I pause the plan? What does the app look like? I know there are other videos that show you how to do these things, but I wanna show you from the perspective of an RVer and an emergency user. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment and like this episode by giving us a thumbs up and please leave a comment. Let me know what you think of my kit. How would you change my kit? What would you add that I haven't? What should I have added that I might need and I don't have already? Is there anything else you wanna know about Starlink? I'll try to include those answers in my next episode. Also, subscribing to our channel really helps us spread the word about Are We There Yet? Hit the bell so you're alerted when there's a new episode. For Karen, Wesley, and myself, we wish you happy travels. See you next time.